Hello my beautiful friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Autumn. This is a space where I share a lot of my own personal journey and I talk about self-love and spirituality and all things in between. And I'm super, super excited and honored to be here with you all today. I'm going to share a little bit about my journey through eating disorder recovery that happened several years ago at this point, almost four? Let me think for a second almost five, almost five years ago. And I wanna talk about full recovery, how it's possible, my journey with that, and just like where I'm at now in my relationship to myself and my relationship to the world and how I got to this point. Because and I know if you've been a part of my channel or you follow my work, I also have a podcast and I'm on Instagram. Autumn Brienne, my podcast is Freeing the Wild Women, but if you have followed my work at all, you've probably heard me say this before, and it is that I have never met a woman who has not had some form of eating disorder, some form of disordered relationship with food, and or a, a relationship of not love with her body, or has had to reclaim that relationship with her body, or has had at some point in her life a journey of not loving her physical body and how that affects every single thing we do. I feel like those who are on the later end of millennials, earlier Gen Zers, we are kind of like the ones that had this revelation like, this is our physical body. Why, why do we not love them? Why are we taught that they're wrong? And if I know like for instance my mother she has five kids and she's never been educated on her menstrual cycle she doesn't understand the four distinct phases of having a moon having a womb and as women like it's really this generation that's been like whoa why do so many of us not love our physical body and have a relationship with food that is unhealthy and this is really what started all the work I do now with women. And I work mainly in the realm of spirituality, but always coming back to body image because so much of it stems from our relationship to our body. And of course, right, this is our vessel. Every single thing we experience on planet Earth happens within our body. We feel it, we taste it, we touch it, we smell it. Our senses allow us to perceive this reality allow our consciousness to experience this reality and it is our reality this body is the basis of our human experience and human reality so why don't we love it why don't we innately come into this world knowing how precious and miraculous our body is that it's literally worlds inside worlds happening and allowing us to live this extremely complex but beautiful life so that's the question I'm gonna pose and we'll come back on this, we'll touch back on this because I'm about to hold a program called My Beautiful Body that is for limited spaces for women who want to go on this journey to really reclaim their relationship to their physical body, create safety in our body, look at our relationship with food, what it really means to nurture ourselves, to feel good and alive and beautiful and enjoy this experience that is an embodied experience. So there'll be more details about that in the description box, but I really wanna share before we go too deeply into anything else, just about my recovery journey and how my relationship with my body is now. So I was 18 and I pursued a modeling career. I moved to New York briefly and it was horrible. <laughs> I broke out in hives when I was in New York. First of all, like cities just are not my thrive zone. I honestly feel quite anxious when I'm in cities and that's something for me to sit with in this lifetime and reflect on more. And it's just clear my body's like, this is not my environment. So that was a piece of it, but also just like going into the modeling industry and them telling you how to look, how to dress, how to act, what kind of purse to buy. It's insanity. And my eating disorder, which was orthorexia, which is where you just eat so clean and healthy that it's an unhealthy, like mental thing. I had a really strict regimented diet that I was following to maintain this body that was a model body, which is not my natural composition at all. So through that, I developed this eating disorder that was completely tied to modeling. So when I decided to quit my modeling career and move back home to Texas, where I'm from, and 
recover, it was really easy for me to recover in a way compared to a lot of people's journeys because my body image was tied to wanting to model, right? And I had that body, like I had that model body at the time and realized that it wasn't worth it. Like I didn't want to, to look like that. Like it wasn't worth not being connected to my soul and my spirit and my essence. So I quickly began to recover. I gained 40 pounds in a month and I have tons of videos I made back when I was recovering from eating disorder. If you wanna check those out, I'll put the playlist down below. Um, I shared a lot of just like real time, like I'm in recovery and this is what I'm doing. This is how it's happening. And over the past several years, especially, it's become really, really lax and loose. Like my relationship to food and to my body where I was in Hawaii for a while and I went vegan after when I was in my eating disorder recovery because my orthorexia was really tied to kind of like a keto paleo diet. So got to find that balance, right? Went to the other extreme, really high carb vegan, gained a lot of weight. And my body, what I'm learning, right? It's taken me five years just about to really understand what my body lo loves and how I thrive and what she needs. I like a lot of fat. Like I love avocados, I love chocolate, I love almonds, I love olive oil. And this is just like my natural palate, like Mediterranean diet style. Like I love a huge salad with lots of olive oil on it and avocado and other things as well, right? It's not like this is how I eat. I eat basically everything in moderation and listening to my body, it's very intuitive, but I understand like, oh my gosh, I crave these certain foods for a reason because it's what my body needs. And it's taken me a while to get to that fluid relationship of actually trusting my body, right? Trusting my being, especially in this day and age where we get on YouTube, we get on social media and there's someone telling us who, how they do everything, right? And this is how I got these results and this is how you do this and this is what this looks like. We're always being fed, like constantly, the multiple experiences that are happening on earth all at one moment. And it's not to say that that's wrong, it's quite fabulous and can be a tool. And we have to have a strong enough relationship to ourself and our center and our core to be able to know what does and does not apply to us. To know, yeah, this would be something I wanna try and like, wow, the only reason I would wanna try that is to manipulate my physical body and that's not the relationship I wanna have with my body anymore. So there is this component of intuitive discernment and intuitive courage. I love the word courage because if you play with word magic as I do, you can break it down into courage. Like you can find, see that connection to core is where we are courageous from. That's how we can act and be from this place of like, I know who I am, I have my core. And from there, I know what courage even means for me because I know who I am. And we have to be courageous if we are going to love our physical body, if we are going to really understand what relationship with food is actually supportive for us, right? If you are from a lineage of women who have been dieting, who have been trying to change their body, who have not been loving to their body, your relationship to food is gonna be so much different than someone who never experienced that, right? And how you get to treat yourself is different because of these experiences in life. And I truly believe that we can all find this intuitive homeostasis where we're listening to our body and living life how we want to be living, right? And then food becomes the symphony that that is like playing in the background because it's something that we cannot avoid. We eat three meals a day and I could go into so many different rants here. Like, do we grow our own food? Like, what about the earth? And what about, you know, nutrients and nutrition and actual nourishment, right? Like being nourished, being nourished, having a body where we're thriving. So this is kind of another side note. I'm gonna talk about my personal journey now, I promise. So. What happened for me was I began this recovery, went vegan, went really hard into just like gaining weight because that's what I needed to do. 
right? That's the first thing that needed to happen. I was malnourished, I was underweight, I didn't have a moon cycle. So my, my moon came back really quickly because my body is so resilient and healthy and thank goddess she is like, mm, she's so good, she's so good. And I got my moon cycle, was vegan for a while, not like, I, I slowly began to eat less healthy, if you will, and allow myself to just eat more of what I wanted, like having cakes and treats and things like this. I was afraid for a long time because for no logical even reason, just because I had convinced myself that there was a right way to be. And if I wasn't that way, I wouldn't be deserving of love, right? My body would be different and I wouldn't be lovable. I wouldn't be worthy. Something bad would happen. It just became like a trigger for anxiety. And this is a huge part of a lot of people's eating disorder journeys is like, we convince ourselves that there's a right way to do something. And if we don't do it, we are going to lose love. We will lose love. And that is kind of the root of everything that is unhealthy, I feel, just this fear of not being loved or this feeling of not being loved and creating all sorts of different escapes, escapisms from that. Because I know not everyone's journey with eating disorder is like mine where it was completely tied to vanity. Most of the time it's not, most of the time it's emotional. Honestly, it's about self-love, it's about worth, it's about wanting to be accepted, it's about wanting to fit in, right? It's about I need something to control in my life because life is hard and that's why recovery is so complex and eating disorder to me is just a symptom of a greater thing happening in our hearts and we need to address it so holistically because I had gained back the weight but then it was this whole mental thing about letting myself lose control right and dive in settle into surrender into the fact that my body had to learn to trust me again by taking back over <laughs> and like bringing my awareness from my mind back into my body and finding home here again so from then eating whatever I want, having lots of cakes, honestly, there was a period where I ate chocolate cake for breakfast every day for a month because I was kind of sad. It was kind of an emotional thing happening, but it was like revolutionary from the part of me that would never have even had a bite of chocolate cake, right? So there was this complete surrender into like, life just cracked me open inside out and my eating disorder could not anymore because i knew there was so much more happening in life and that my heart belonged to so many other things than just like my relationship to food and how i physically looked and then from there came this pivot where i started dreaming of eating meat and i hadn't had meat for like almost four years at that point this was barely last year and i had my first taste of local bison last fall last November really close to my birthday the first time in four years and it was super nourishing for my body and just like like a deeper layer of connectedness and surrender that I don't have to fit into a box of what I should be but I can listen to my body and I don't eat a lot of meat I eat meat every now and again um, when I'm craving it and when it's clear and this is like a whole other tangent that I should make another video about soon and maybe I will but this whole journey has been about me in connection to my physical body, right? So now I'm at this point where I moved to New Mexico in January from Hawaii. And this was my first winter ever, really, because I'm from Texas and it never got this cold. I was in snow. I was in coldness. And my body put on weight. Oh, a hummingbird outside. My body put on weight to protect me, to make me feel safe, to like, oh, give me layers of fat so I could live properly and function. And that was different for me because I had been the heaviest weight I had ever been in and it invited me into this deeper like understanding how smart, like how intelligent our bodies are. And then to see how quickly my body shed this weight when spring came into summer, and it all happened naturally without my control, without me even doing anything, right? Just listening and allowing my body to have her rhythms, allowing my body to have her cycles. And this is the most natural thing we could possibly do. Yet our society has made it where this is kind of like a radical way of existing, where we're not 
binging or restricting or counting calories or following a specific diet or like locked into a box but actually letting our body tell us what's up and especially being a woman, being someone who has a menstrual cycle, being someone whose body wants to follow the seasons, this is going to probably look different for each of us because we are different. It will look different for each of us. So even if we're following like a holistic earth-based diet where we're like, you know, eating seasonal foods and things like this, it's going to look slightly different for each of us because our body is always communicating to us because our we've lived different experiences because our parents have lived different experiences and each of those things has brought us to this moment and that is going to tell us how and what and who to be what to eat how we can relate to each moment right so what i'm asking of each of you is this radical ownership and this radical love of self where we actually trust and believe our body and have that deep relationship where we're like oh this is what you need i can give you that oh this is what you need i will give you that oh this is what you're asking of me i hear you i'll be with this and maybe it's uncomfortable and maybe it's hard and maybe it asks something of us that we have never done before and can can we listen yes we can will we is the question will we trust ourselves will we have the courage to do so and if you are on this journey of recovering of building a trusting loving relationship with your body i really really encourage you to do my program my beautiful body it's a five-week journey where we are rewriting the relationship the story the narrative to our physical body and to our relationship with food we are going to be creating this container within our vessel where we understand what our body's needs are and how we can trust her and really diving into beauty like oh my god our body is doing so much for us all the time do we even recognize it and what would it feel like to allow ourselves to be witnessed and seen for our beauty so this journey is going to be super in depth we meet four weeks out of the five weeks we meet two weeks we'll take a week off and then meet two more weeks and then within that you have guided meditations and journaling prompts and weekly assignments to hold you accountable but our two-hour calls are basically going to consist of like a lecture that i will give some embodiment and movement breathing and sharing so we're going to dive into different concepts and ideas and practice what that is like in our body and really anchor in different realities, different mindsets into our physical body and change the way we feel, not just the way we think about ourselves, but the way we actually feel about ourselves and get used to holding different frequencies in our body. And then from there, we have daily this daily assignment we're going to be playing with that's really going to open up clear communication from our body and our intuition to our heart so we're like hearing and feeling ourselves truthfully so this is a journey for the women ready to be themselves like ready to anchor in confidence no more comparison that's something we're going to touch on no more thinking that anything or anyone outside of us knows more but creating the space to come home fully and if you're called to this program, there's a link in the description box and in the comment section where you can go to my website and check it out, fill out the application, and I'll get back to you really soon. I only have limited space because I'm receiving, I'm sending out to the women who join flower essences and body oils that I made, and I only made so much. So it's going to be a beautiful, intimate container where we're diving into this self-love relationship to our body and our inherent worth and i cannot wait to do this with you so if you have any questions you can let me know down in the comments if you want to see more content if you have any like specific questions about eating disorder recovery or my journey please let me know and i'll make a video for you all really soon thank you for being here with me i love you so much and i'll see you really soon